Okay, so this is what we've got right now temporarily so that the homeowner can still use his power. Now what you've got is you got the solar coming down to our 80 amp breaker to the charge controller. The charge controller in turn is feeding the batteries. The batteries go back to the inverter. Now, this is where it gets complicated. And I've opened this up so you can see it and it's attached directly. We're going to put all of this in housing, either um, uh, probably some flex. But you can see temporarily we've got the two hot, that's going to be the wires coming from the inverter, going back up to a uh, manual disconnect right there and then that goes back up into the ceiling and then eventually over to the its own circuit breaker panel okay okay now this is the part that's a little bit uh, debatable about whether it should be done or not but you notice we have an outlet that we install now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a timer on that outlet we'll be showing you that in just a minute what we've got over here is this pigtail is coming to the inverter and that's going to plug into the outlet and the reason for that is if for some reason the grid goes down and the solar doesn't work for some reason you got maybe stormy weather that kind of thing then you can always take that pigtail and plug it into a generator all right so there you go you can always take it to another source of power to charge all these batteries so you're not limited to just a hardwire system like we've got ideally you would hardwire this whole thing but in this case we want to have a backup and that's how you would do it my question to you Ross is right here this 15 this uh, circuit which is going to be feeding the inverter uh, can the timer that attaches to it be a 15 amp timer? Uh, maybe we figure out a way for the power not to be running through it, just uh, controlling the power. Just an on-off switch.